You're watching the Physics Classroom's video tutorial series on Newton's Laws. The topic of this video is Force and Motion Misconceptions. We wish to answer two questions here. What are some of those pesky little force and motion misconceptions that trouble physics students and in what way can we adjust our thinking so that we can overcome such misconceptions? Let's get started. One of the most important things you can do in a physics course is to ask the question, what is it that I believe and why? So we're going to start this video on misbeliefs or misconceptions by asking you the question, what is it that you believe? So why don't you pause the video for a moment and look through these four statements that you see and try to decide what your opinion is regarding them. Are they true or false in your mind? Go ahead and do that and then when you're done go ahead and press play. Let's start with a little thought experiment. Let's suppose you were to take a book and give it a quick sudden push across a tabletop or a floor. What would happen? Well, you'd get the book moving from its rest position, but then soon after the push ended, the book would skid to a stop. Now, why does the book skid to a stop? Some students might think the book skids to a stop because a force is required to keep that book continually moving forward. Well, that's not really universally true. Let's talk about that, because that's our first misconception. The reason the book comes to a stop is not because of the absence of a continued force, but because of the presence of a force, a force that we call friction. The book stops because of the presence of an unbalanced force, not because of the absence of one. So we're going to talk a little bit about friction and why it causes the book to stop. Friction results when two surfaces rub across one another. If we could keep the surfaces from rubbing across one another, there would be no friction. And that's what an air track glider does, as seen here. The glider gliding across the track hovers slightly above the track, such that there's no friction. And so you can see as it moves from left to right that it moves at a seemingly constant speed. Removing friction causes objects to continue in motion with the same speed and direction. Friction is an opposing force that slows objects down when there's no other force to balance it out. If we consider a car that moves to the right, what we notice about the car is when the wheels spin, it moves at a constant speed. That spinning of the wheels provides a forward force that counterbalances any backwards resistance forces. But the moment the wheels stop spinning, what we note about the car is it still continues forward. For a slight amount of distance, the car continues forward even in the absence of a forward force. So from the air track glider, the thought experiment, in our observations of cars, we have to conclude that the force is not required in a direction of motion in order to cause a car to move in that direction. Our second misconception is the belief that a rightward moving object must be experiencing more rightward force than leftward force. But the truth is that these things we call forces, when unbalanced, cause objects to accelerate in the direction of the unbalanced force. We see two force diagrams here. In the one on the left, there's more force to the right than to the left. This is an object that we know for certain is accelerating to the right. It could be moving in either direction, but if it's moving to the right, it's speeding up. And the second diagram shows more force to the left than to the right. This is an object that's definitely accelerating to the left, which means that it could be moving to the right and slowing down. This second force diagram is representative of a car that moves to the right and slows down, or of a book that moves across a table to the right and slows down. So we see here that an object can move to the right even though there's not more rightward force than leftward force. So the proper conception of force in motion is to understand that forces do not cause objects to move in a given direction. What forces do is they cause objects to change the manner in which they move. Forces, when unbalanced, cause objects to accelerate. That is, they cause them to change the manner in which they move, either their speed or their direction. A rightward accelerating object 
is an object that must have more rightward force than leftward force. But you can't say that a rightward moving object has more rightward force than leftward force. Like for instance, if you look at this force diagram here, what you notice is there's no force to the right, but there's force to the left. This is an object that we know for certain is accelerating to the left, but it doesn't mean it's moving to the left. What it could mean is that it's moving to the, to the right and slowing down. Here's another diagram with more rightward force than leftward force. This is an object that's definitely accelerating to the right, and it could be moving to the right as well. And if it were, it's speeding up. What forces do is change the way that objects move, but they don't determine the direction that an object moves. The third misconception is that objects that move upwards and rightwards through the air are experiencing an upward and rightward force like the ball that you see right above me. Well, forces are not that mysterious. They actually result from the interaction of objects with their surroundings. In the case of the ball, there's only two things you can think of that the ball's interacting with. It's interacting with the earth through gravity. We call that a field force. And it's interacting with the air that it moves through. We call that an air resistance force. Neither one of these forces is upwards and rightwards. Gravity acts downwards. We all know that. And air resistance is a resistance or opposing force and it would act downwards and leftwards upon an upwards and rightwards moving ball. So we cannot conclude it by any means that an upwards and rightwards moving fall is being acted upon by an upwards and rightwards force. Our fourth misconception is the belief that a force can act upon an object for some time after the contact with the object ends. For instance, if you were to push a cart, this misbelief is that the force of the hand on the cart continues to act upon the cart, even while the hand's not touching it. Now this sort of goes against our whole belief in what a force is. A force is simply an interaction between two objects that more often than not result from the contact of the objects with one another. And once that contact ends, the force ends. This misbelief probably exists because people believe that a force is required to keep an object moving in a given direction. And when they can't think of any other force to describe what's pushing the object forward, they come up with the idea of this hand is pushing on the object. But as you notice here in this video, it's not necessary for the hand to continue pushing up on the cart for the cart to continue moving forward. It continues moving forward even in the absence of that pushing force because a force is not required to keep an object moving in a given direction. Now we're going to begin thinking about some correct ways to think about force and motion. And when we think about force and motion, one of the first questions we always have to ask are, are the forces that act upon an object balanced? And if the answer to that question is yes, then what we can conclude is that the object's not going to accelerate. That means one of two things. It could mean that the object's at rest and it's going to stay at rest, or it could mean that the object's moving maybe at two meters per second to the east and it's going to continue moving with that same speed in that same direction. But if we answer the original question, are the forces balanced? If we answer that question with a no, then what that means is that the object will accelerate. Now the direction of the acceleration depends upon the direction of the unbalanced force. And this brings us to Newton's second law of motion. And we'll talk about that in one of our next videos. We're going to watch an animation of a rocket sledder. A sledder that has equipped on its sled a little rocket or jets that give it forward or backwards force. You'll notice the rocket sledders right here, and over here on the right is a speedometer that reads out for us the speed as a digital printout. And in the middle of the screen, you'll see force diagrams, and all this is going to change over the course of the animation. So here we go. We begin with a balance of force, an object at rest stays at rest. And then what we're going to do is turn on the rocket jets. There they go. Now there's more rightward force than leftward force, and it causes this rightward acceleration. We see the speed increasing. But we're going to turn those jets off. Now there's a balance of forces. The rocket sledder is moving to the right with a constant speed. Then we're going to get some backwards force on our rocket, and that slows it down a bit. And now another constant speed motion. And finally, we'll turn on some friction. 
and the rocket slider slows to a stop due to the presence of a leftward unbalanced force. So here we have our four original beliefs. And we ask you, what do you believe? Are they true or are they false? And we've talked about them all. And we hope you've given them some thought and are coming around to the idea that every one of these statements is false. And you have some good reasons for believing why. Now at this time in every video, I like to give you an action plan, a way of kind of making this lesson stick. But before I do, could I ask you to help us out? If you like the video, can you give us a like? Maybe even subscribe to our channel. And when you do, tap the bell and get notifications when new videos come out. And finally, there's a place to leave questions and comments below. We'd love to hear from you. All right, now for the action plan. First of all, at our website, we have a series of concept builders. We have links in the description section to these three concept builders. Any one of them would be a great way for making this lesson stick. And we have a Minds on Physics app, a whole series of them actually. And app number two has three modules on it. The first module is called Newton's Laws of Motion. And if you go to that module and you, you, you give Mission NL2 and NL3 a try, it'd be a great way to solidify your learning. And finally, at our website, we have a tutorial section. And you can go to the Newton's Laws chapter of that tutorial. And in lesson three, there's a page called The Big Misconception. Great way to freshen up on the lesson that you just had. Well, thanks for joining us. Best of luck to you.